uh, to get to this stage and indeed the team that went out nationally last week through Procurement Australia and we're talking about some of the biggest brands uh, in Melbourne uh, brands like NAB, uh, Bank Australia, local governments, uh, you know, the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition um, Bureau and Centre. Um, and, and what we're trying to do here is come together, aggregate demand and go direct to the market. And we're hoping that the market can then come back to us um, with, with a good price is, is probably one of the key parameters. But what we're also doing is using our buying power of these large electricity consumers. And what will happen is the winning tender of, of this tender, when it closes on, on May 23rd, will actually build uh, and, and operate uh, new generation uh, renewable energy projects. So this is over and above the renewable energy target and it's firmly about uh, changing the energy mix for Victoria. This is something that's really quite unusual. I've never seen something like this been done. What kind of impact could a project like this have? It's quite groundbreaking. Could it set a trend for other businesses and councils to follow? Yeah, that's the hope, John. I think the, the impact of this will be quite significant. We're talking, as you mentioned, about 110 gigawatt hours per year, 28,000 homes. So in itself, it's quite a big impact. Um, but we think the replication potential of this project is really where we'll see it sing. Uh, what we're going to do here is, is effectively ground truth or road test a new way of going direct to market. And as I said, it's taken two years to get to this stage and a lot of uh, legal work, structural work, and you can only imagine in those 13 different organisations with different energy loads, uh, different requirements, uh, different corporate social responsibility uh, aims and targets, that the complexity uh, of a group buy like this is, is quite significant. So what we'll be doing once we've completed the tender uh, and we actually uh, you know, move forward on, on that new renewable energy project somewhere in regional Australia and that's about driving uh, jobs in regional Australia and driving investment in regional Australia. The work is already beginning on how to actually replicate that um, both in Australia so internationally. So we've had the executive director of Mike Bloomberg's uh, C40 cities, that's about 25% of GDP that those cities make up. Uh, and he was hugely excited when he visited and heard about this, this project going direct to market with aggregated demand and, and hopefully driving a, a really good price on a renewable energy project. Now how important has the Melbourne business community been to this project and can other companies or organisations get involved with it? Yeah, look, hugely important. We wouldn't have been able to do it um, without them. You know, as I mentioned, there's you know, quite a number of cultural in institutions, tertiary institutions like RMIT and Melbourne University. Uh, Zoos Victoria is in the mix as well. Um, but without uh, sort of some of the bigger loads uh, from uh, big companies like NAB, uh, and even data centres like NextDC are involved and, and as we know some of these data centres are using the equivalent energy uh, each year that a small town would use. Without that load what we realised from a request for information process which was run uh, last year was that we needed a threshold of about 100 um, gigawatt hours of energy for the year to actually drive a project which was going to be feasible. So the business community has been uh, very, very important. Um, they've been on board. And, and I think what you're finding is that this is meeting a lot of corporate social responsibility targets, but this also makes uh, business sense for a lot of those companies too, particularly with a data centre like NextDC, is they're looking at this to hedge against future price increases for electricity. So again, this is really smart money at work. It's, it's smart business and also good for the environment. Now it's good to see with Next DC doing that, of course, if you can save money and, and do something environmental, it's always going to be a win-win. Now, why have, you, why have you taken on a project like this? Is it part of a wider strategy? It is. It's part of a much wider strategy. Indeed, in 2002, the City of Melbourne recognised that uh, you know, we were already up there as one of the world's most livable cities, and we've been lucky enough uh, over the last five years to be named the world's most livable city. But when you look at being the world's most livable city, if you're also not one of the world's most sustainable cities, then really that's just a placeholder. You need to be working on water, energy, waste, uh, biodiversity, uh, public transport, making all these things work to, to drive a city which remains uh, really high up there in, in the livability state. So um, embarking on, on that project, the 2002 project was the zero net emissions strategy. We've got a target of being zero net emissions by 2020, hugely ambitious. 
part of that too includes a renewable energy target for the city. That's 25% by 2018. Now we know that Victoria is only sitting at around about 11 or 12% of renewable energy um, in the mix here at the moment. So if we want to change the mix, then we've got to find new ways uh, of going to market to drive renewable energy investment. And that's why the Melbourne Renewable Energy uh, Project is, is really exciting. I mean, there has been some direct purchasing models. Um, you mentioned IKEA, um, Apple, um, Google, Facebook. These guys have actually gone direct and purchased renewable energy. Um, but the complexity of 13 different organisations coming together for a group purchasing model like this is a first for Australia. So that's what's really exciting about it and, and also that replication potential. Well, it's a great idea and it's great to see you all joining forces and bringing it about. Aaron Wood, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, John. Over the last few years, IKEA has been involved in a major push to put hundreds of thousands of solar panels on the rooftops of their stores around the world. They've now decided to go one step further by selling solar panels in IKEA stores. To find out more about this and its implications for solar sales, we go to the London Stock Exchange, where we're joined by Joanna Yarrow, the Head of Sustainability for IKEA in the UK and Ireland. Joanna, thanks for joining us. I'd like to start by asking... Um, before you know you, your plans to sell solar panels, I'd like to start by asking you about your existing program of rolling out solar panels onto the rooftops of IKEA stores. How many solar panels have you installed to date and how much have you spent on that globally? Hi John. Well, as part of our commitment we're energy positive by 2020, which means renewably generating at least as much energy as we use in our operations by that date. We've so far installed just over 700,000 solar panels on our buildings worldwide and also we're committed to own and operate 327 wind turbines. Uh, on that renewables program so far...